Hello there. Welcome to the Upscale Plaid Quilt Along. I am so excited that you have found yourself here. We are going to be making the Upscale Plaid Quilt together. It's just a quick four week quilt along, very casual, and I'm excited. If we haven't met, my name is Brittany Lloyd of Lo and Behold Stitchery. So let's jump in. First and foremost, a little bit about the pattern and a little bit about the quilt along. So this video is going to go along with a blog post. So this is the week one video. It's going to live in the week one blog post. If you're finding this video on YouTube, I will link to the blog post down below in the description of this video. You'll want to be sure to check that out. Each week there is going to be a video and a blog post together and we are going to walk through all of the steps of making this quilt top from start to finish. By the end of the four weeks, you will have it all sewn together and it will be ready for basting, quilting, and binding, which I will just touch on a few resources for that at the end of this quilt along, but we are just going to be talking about sewing together the quilt top. So I have split this up. Week one is cutting. So this week we are just focusing on the cutting instructions that are within the pattern. If you don't already have a copy of the pattern, you can either get a PDF digital download that will be available right after you purchase it, or you can purchase a paper copy and it will get shipped to you either way. And one really cool thing about this pattern is there are seven sizes to choose from. So there is a coaster size all the way up to a king size. You are welcome to make whatever size you would like for the quilt along. I am going to be making the throw size. So just the middle of the road, it's 67 inches square. There's also a lap size, which would kind of be considered a small throw that you could make, or you're welcome to make one of the bed sizes or one of the smaller sizes. Also taking a look at the pattern, there are five different layout variations, which in my opinion makes this pattern so, so fun and unique. And you can just really, um, there's so many different possibilities, so many different directions that you could go in making this pattern. So you do not have to decide on a layout quite yet because you're gonna cut your fabrics the exact same way for all of the five different layouts. So this week you really just need to decide what size you're making. Uh, you should have your fabrics picked out already and we are just going to be cutting and then we can decide on a layout a little bit later. I do want to say if you are making a bed size, just a little side note here, we have a quilt drape diagram that shows you what the top of the uh, queen mattress is going to look like, what part of the quilt is going to be showing on the top of a queen mattress, and then the same for a king. So you might want to take a look at that too before you decide on a layout, but again, we're gonna be coming back to those layouts in a future week. For now, we're just focusing on the size and our fabrics. So speaking of fabrics, we have a Choosing Fabrics blog post that talks a little bit about the color theory behind choosing fabrics for this quilt. It's a little bit unique in the sense that we are creating like a transparency effect. So we're kind of imagining fabrics overlapping each other and what that color is then created from that overlap. So it's a little bit of a different kind of pattern to choose fabrics for. So we have a blog post that walks you through all of the different tips for choosing fabrics for this quilt. You can kind of think of this quilt in three main colors. So we have A1, B1, and C1, and then the rest of the fabrics are where those fabrics are overlapping. And then there's the background. So there's nine main fabrics plus a background, definitely check out that blog post if you have not chosen your fabrics yet. There is also a resource called Prequilt, and I love this program. It is incredible for choosing your fabrics, especially if you plan to use solids. It is a free website that you can use for solids. Now you can upgrade and save your designs. You can import prints if you upgrade, but the free version has all of the solids in there and you can just plug and play and see what the quilt is going to look like with different fabrics. So it's so, so helpful whenever you are planning your quilt. So if you are going to be choosing your own fabrics, if you're still a little bit undecided on what fabrics you are using, 
definitely check out Prequilt. I'm going to link to that below and in the blog post so that you can find it. It is so, so super helpful. We are in the process of getting all of Lo and Behold patterns and designs uploaded to Prequilt. We are not quite there yet. We still have um, a good number of patterns to go, but we've kind of gotten a start. So like vintage lace, knitted star, we have a few patterns uploaded. So if you are looking to make any of those patterns in the coming weeks or months, then you can start planning those quilts as well. So anyways, pre-quilt is great. Definitely check it out if you are looking to plan your quilt. You are also welcome to choose a kit if you are someone who just wants all of the decisions made for you. We have lots of different kits to choose from in our shop. This is actually what I am going to be making for the quilt along. It's called our shamrock kit. I am so, so excited about this version. I am not someone who sews with a lot of greens. I would say maybe once a year I make a quilt that has green in it. And this is my quilt with green for 2024. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out. It has lots of different shades of green. And then there's also, let me see here, a little bit of black and oh, there it is. Kind of like a cedar color. I think it is Sienna brick. So that is what I'm making. Still not sure about the layout, but those are my fabrics. So be sure to check out the kits that we have in our shop. I'm also linking to several different other quilt shops that have various kits to choose from. They're all just so, so beautiful. And I don't know how you're going to decide what to make because there's just so many options out there. So good luck with making a decision. I know I have at least three more upscale plaid quilts that I want to make after this. So cannot wait to see what fabrics you have picked out. Be sure to check out the kits if you would like or choose your own fabrics using pre-quilt and the choosing fabrics blog post. And if you don't have your fabrics picked out yet, then hit pause on this video, go do that, and then come back to watch once you have all of your fabrics. So now we are going to move on to the cutting portion of this pattern. So once you have all of your fabrics, if you are someone who likes to pre-wash, go ahead and pre-wash, do all of that before you get started. I am not a pre-washer. I typically just cut it straight off the bolt and wash it for the first time once it's in my quilt. But if you are concerned with bleeding or if you're using like a few different kinds of substrates and you want everything to shrink up so that it's kind of all going to behave similarly once it's in your quilt, then go ahead and pre-wash. I will include some pre-washing details and instructions if you're unsure if you want to pre-wash or not then read through that in the blog post, but I am just going to cut my fabrics as is. Now I am going to press my fabrics and I might even go ahead and just starch my fabrics too. Why not? It's not going to hurt anything. Starch is what adds kind of that stiffness to the fabric and it just makes it easier to cut, easier to sew with. And sometimes I starch, sometimes I don't. If I'm making something like curves, then I'm definitely going to want to starch just because we're dealing with a lot of bias edges. For this quilt, it doesn't really matter if you starch or not. So take it or leave it. But we are going to press our fabrics and I'm going to show you how I do that. If you have a system in place, then feel free to go ahead and starch, press, pre-wash, do all of the things like you normally would. But if you are curious how I do this process, then feel free to watch and follow along. Another thing that I'm going to do along with pressing, I'm actually going to press my fabric flat so that it's all one layer and then I'm going to refold my fabric. So since we are cutting width of fabric strips, this quilt is all strips. And since we're doing strip piecing, I am going to want those strips to be as straight as possible. And sometimes whenever you receive yardage, that fold just isn't quite straight on that piece of fabric. And so what I like to do is just refold my fabric, realign my selvages, 
and create a new fold. And then that way, whenever I cut my width of fabric strips, I know that that fabric that's around the fold is going to be straight. So if you've ever cut a width of fabric strip and there's a little bit of a bend around that fold, it is just an indicator that it probably wasn't the straightest fold in the world. So that's why I like to just go ahead and refold everything, make sure that we are nice and square before I start cutting. So this is what that looks like. What I typically do is open up my yardage. And like I said, I'm just going to press it all flat, get rid of that folded crease. Since I'm using starch, I'm going to go ahead and starch my fabric at this point. You can skip this step if you would like. And I like to position my ironing board beside my table so that I can kind of help catch the weight of my fabric. This is especially helpful whenever you are pressing really, really big cuts of fabric. And then once it is all pressed, I like to take my two selvage ends and I'm going to realign them to make sure that they are right on top of each other. I'm going to make sure that whenever I lift up on the two ends of my fabric that the drape of my fabric around my fold is straight and that there is not a ripple in it. So I want to make sure that it's draping nice and flat and that my selvages are perfectly aligned. Then I am going to press a new crease. And I am going to repeat this for all of my fabrics, even my bigger cut of fabric, which is my background. So I'm going to put all of my fabric on the floor in between me and the ironing board. And then I'm going to press my fabric flat in sections. And as I'm pressing it, I'm going to move it off the ironing board and onto my table. You can see that I have one selvage end on my right side and the other selvage on my left side. And I am just pressing out all of the creases, even the fold that was in the middle of my fabric. Then once it is all pressed, I am going to refold my fabric in sections. And then I am going to do an accordion fold. This is just a back and forth fold. And this is going to help me stay organized whenever I go to cut. If you are looking for more guidance on how to cut with the fabric strips, if your with the fabric strips always end up wonky, or if you're just curious about a little bit more detail for this process, I have a blog post called how to cut with the fabric strips, and I'm going to link to it in the week one blog post for this quilt along. I'll also link to it below this video if you're watching on YouTube. Check out that blog post. There's some photos, there's some um, kind of methodology behind why we do this process. And yeah, there is a more step-by-step -step instruction within that post. Okay, so once you have prepared your fabric, starch, pre-wash, refolding, pressed, all of the things, whatever you are choosing to do to prepare your fabrics, then you are ready to cut. So before we start cutting, I want to point out that upscale plaid includes fabric labels. So fabric labels are not something that I normally use. With this quilt, I have noticed that these fabric labels really do come in handy. Once your fabrics are cut, you can label a one, a two, a three, all of the different fabrics so that you can just stay organized throughout this process. There's a lot of fabrics in this quilt and sometimes it's hard to remember which one is which. So definitely check out the fabric labels and there is also a plan your quilt worksheet, which I have had a lot of fun with these worksheets. I am someone who is kind of starting to get intrigued by quilt journaling or just like keeping track of the quilts that I make and what fabrics I use. I don't know. I think there's something to be said for just really tracking and being intentional with everything that we make. And 
I feel like 10 years from now, it is just something that's going to be really cool to look back on. And you can even get specific with it. What was happening when you were making the quilt? What was the weather? What year was it? All of the things. So there is a worksheet in here. And what I did for my worksheets is I cut just a little swatch from the selvages and I just sewed those swatches right on my paper. So I have a seam line going across my paper, holding those swatches in place, just so that I can keep track of which fabric was A3, even what my binding and backing is, all the way down to like what thread I used, what stitch length I used. So that can be really helpful. You can do one or the other, the fabric labels or the worksheet, or you can do both, or you can do neither. But I think that these are really great tools that are included in the pattern, and I think organization wise, they would be really, really handy. So definitely take advantage of those before we start cutting. So now let's move on to some cutting tips. So first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about cutting supplies. With this pattern, I recommend if you have a 24 inch square ruler, 24 inch long ruler, then that is really, really going to be helpful. We're cutting lots of strips, especially for the larger sizes. And for width of fabric strips, I don't like to fold my fabric too many times. So I cut my fabric, so I'm just cutting the two layers at a time. And having this 24 inch square, I keep wanting to call it a square ruler. <laughs> having this 24 inch ruler really allows me to do that. And I use this ruler in all of my quilts. It is probably my most used ruler. So I have a six inch by 24 inch ruler. And then I also have a eight and a half inch by 24 inch ruler. And I use both. I really love both. So a 24 inch ruler is going to be helpful. And then if you have a square ruler, then that's also going to be helpful too. So my most used square rulers are 12 and a half inch and eight and a half inch. So really, I think you can get by with just two rulers, this one and maybe go with a 12 and a half inch ruler, maybe go bigger if, if you're looking to purchase anything, but whatever ruler you have is probably going to be fine. I just really find that this is like kind of my MVP of rulers. I use it the most. Um, as far as cutting mats go, I also like to have a cutting mat that one of the edges is 24 inches. So I have two different cutting mats. I have an 18 inch by 24 inch ruler cutting mat, and then I have a uh, 24 by 36 inch cutting mat as well. Either one of those is great. Just having that 24 inch edge is going to allow me to use this ruler and cut my width of fabric strips. And then just whatever size rotary cutter you wish, the most common size is probably a 45 millimeter for quilting. You could also use a 60 millimeter. I have sometimes been known to use a 28 millimeter, even cutting yardage and with the fabric strips. Sometimes I just like having a smaller rotary cutter. It just feels better in my hand. So whatever size rotary cutter you wish, but I will say 45 is probably the most common. So whatever you want to do there. And um, let's see, I will link to all of these supplies in the blog post. So if you are looking to purchase anything, I'll link to the exact supplies that I love in that post. And let's get over to our cutting instructions table. So Taking a look at the pattern, first and foremost, if you have not already read the section at the beginning of the pattern, then maybe hit pause on this video and go and read that section. It's the part that says, read through all instructions before beginning. You'll want to do that because it's always just nice to know where, where are we going here? What is the end goal? What is the plan? What are the in-between steps? Sometimes that can give you a little bit of clarity if you know what's to come. So definitely spend some time looking through the pattern and definitely spend some time looking through this kind of section at the beginning of the pattern that talks through, like for example, the first bullet point says, all seams are a quarter inch. And then it says, this pattern assumes that you're with the fabric is 42 inches. So that is something that is super, super important. If your width of fabric is less than 42 inches, then you're probably going to need a little bit more fabric because I wrote this pattern so that I'm assuming that your 
width of fabric is 42 inches and if it's not then you're not going to be able to do exactly what the pattern says so just keep that in mind a little bit about the backing stitch length abbreviations those are all things that you'll want to familiarize yourself with before you get started i think that the main thing with cutting is that let's see an asterisk beside a measurement indicates that it's a square so if you see four inches with an asterisk, then that means that it's a four inch by four inch piece of fabric or four inches square. Okay, let's take a look over at the cutting instructions table. So if you have a paper copy of the pattern, this is page three and four of the paper pattern. And if you have a PDF copy, this is page four and five. So the different sizes are split up between two different pages. So make sure you're looking at the correct size at the top of the page. Okay, so looking under the cutting instructions, it says to cut pieces in the order that they are listed. And we are going to use leftover fabrics whenever it's possible for our remaining cuts. So just kind of FYI, we're gonna be cutting things exactly how they're listed, the exact order that they're listed in the table. And then we're just gonna be saving everything until we're done just to make sure that we can get all of our cuts. So let's take a look at the lap size for A1. I want to walk you through these instructions just to make sure that we all understand exactly what it is we're doing. So whenever you see a uh, text that is bolded, that indicates that it is a width of fabric strip. So at for the lap size, we are cutting two, two and a half inch times width of fabric strips. And then we're gonna set those strips aside because they are going to be left intact. There are no subcuts listed underneath that line. So we're gonna cut our two with the fabric strips. We're gonna set those aside and then we're gonna move on to the next line, which says we need to cut three two and a half inch times with a fabric strip. So both of those lines are the same size strips. But the difference is from the three two and a half inch times width of fabric strips, we are going to be sub cutting eight two and a half inch times 11 and a half inch pieces. So that bullet point indicates that those are going to be sub cuts from what we just cut. So from those three two and a half inch strips, we're going to be cutting eight two and a half inch by 11 and a half inch pieces. So the bullet points are the sub cuts. The bolded lines are the width of fabric cuts. So then you're just going to move through the pattern like so. Um, Want to point out that lap size A2, we're just cutting four two and a half inch squares. So there's no width of fabric cuts that you're cutting there. You can cut those squares whichever way you want. Maybe if you have a directional fabric, you want to think about how that fabric is going to appear within your quilt. And then moving on to A3, that strip is just going to be left intact. There are no subcuts underneath it. Looking at B1, we have two two and a half inch times with the fabric strips, and then we're going to subcut from those strips. So first we're gonna cut our two two and a half inch by 25 inch pieces. So since it's a 25 inch piece, that means we're going to be cutting one 25 inch piece from one strip and then one 25 inch piece from another strip. And then the following bullet point has a diamond beside that measurement. So this is another thing that I want to cover is the diamond symbol. So looking at the footnote at the bottom of our cutting instructions table, the diamond indicates that we are sewing remnant pieces together and then subcutting from there. So looking back at the B1 lap size, we're cutting our 25 inch piece from the one strip, a 25 inch piece from another strip, and then we're gonna have these leftover pieces that we're going to sew together and then cut our second bullet point. That second subcut is a one and a half inch by 25 and by 28 and a half inch piece. That's a mouthful. So basically just keep in mind, we want to complete one bullet point before moving on to the next. Whenever you see the diamond, that means you're sewing together your leftover pieces and then cutting the remaining pieces from there. 
This is to decrease on fabric waste and to save with our fabric requirements. So you're just gonna have a little seam in the pieces that have the diamond indication. You'll just have a seam in that strip of fabric and it's not going to be noticeable at all once it is in your finished quilt. So this is, like I said, to save fabric. So the lap size has the diamond. I think the throw size has one diamond and the king size has a couple of diamonds because those pieces are really, really big. If we were only cutting out of a width of fabric strip, that's 42 inches and we need a 22 and a half inch piece. If we only cut that one 22 and a half inch piece from that strip, then that's gonna be what, 20 inches of waste. So this is, yeah, we're just trying to save fabric. With those diamonds, go ahead and double check the measurement of your leftover pieces. If your width of fabric strips are more than 42 inches, you actually might be able to get by with doing your subcuts without sewing your remnant pieces together. I came across this when I was making the throw size. I am using Kona solids, which is a lot of times larger than 42 inches. So I actually didn't need to sew my remnant pieces together in order to get the number of subcuts that I needed. So just keep that in mind. Double check your remnant pieces. You might be able to get your subcuts from those pieces without having that extra seam. So just to give you another example, let's look at the throw size A3. So we are cutting one, one and three quarter inch times with the fabric. We're gonna set that aside. There's no subcuts listed under that. And then we're gonna cut another one and three quarter inch times with the fabric strip. And then from that, we're going to subcut a one and three quarter by 10 inch piece. So that is how the subcuts and diamonds work. Now let's talk about actually cutting our fabrics. So we're just going to move through the cutting instructions one fabric at a time. You can either start with the background or you can just start at the top and start with A1, then go on to A2, labeling your fabrics as you go so you can remember which fabric is which. For the coaster, placemat, and pillow, some of those are not cut from yardage, so it might be cut from like a five inch square or a fat 16th. You can position those cuts however you need to on the fabric. There's no specific way that you have to cut those pieces, but for the lap size and larger, even some of the placemat and pillow fabrics, there is yardage there. We are just going to be cutting our width of fabric strips first. So we're going to lay our fabric on the cutting mat. And first we're going to need to create a fresh edge to start cutting our piece from. Since we refolded this fabric and created a new fold that is more square with our selvages, then we are going to align a horizontal line in our ruler with the fold of our fabric. And then we are going to make sure that we're not wasting too much fabric, but we just want to create a fresh edge to start cutting from. So we're going to cut the first edge, walking our hand up the ruler. Then we are going to rotate the cutting mat around and start cutting our pieces from there. So keep in mind, I am right-handed. If you're left-handed, you're going to want to imagine this as a mirror image. And I am someone who likes to use the lines on my ruler instead of the lines on my cutting mat. If you have taken an online course with me or I've even mentioned this in other quilt alongs. I just trust these lines a lot more than I trust the lines on my cutting mat. Cutting mats are self-healing, meaning the lines can move, especially over time as you use those lines over and over and over. They are not going to stay accurate. And you really just get a more accurate depiction of what it is you're actually cutting whenever you are covering the desired measurement that you need and using the lines on your ruler for your pieces. So that's just my personal preference. Feel free to go through this process however you are most comfortable. So what that means is that I am going to line up the fresh edge that I just created with the size with the fabric strip that I need. So if I need a three inch times with the fabric strip, I'm going to align the three inch vertical line with the fresh edge that I just created. 
and my fold should still align with a horizontal line in my ruler because this is a 90 degree angle. It should be nice and square. And then I'm going to cut my strips from there. So I'm going to cut my width of fabric strips. If they don't have any bullet points listed below them, if there are no sub cuts for those width of fabric strips, I'm going to fold them up and just leave them intact. Those are gonna be used for strip piecing next week. And then whenever I do come across a set of width of fabric strips that do have sub cuts below them, I'm gonna cut my width of fabric strips first and then I'm going to just cut my sub cuts from there. So in this example, I am going to trim off my selvages by aligning a horizontal line in the ruler with the edge of my fabric and then I will make my perpendicular cut that is going to give me a fresh edge and I typically just like to cut my width of fabric strip folded in half. So I'm cutting two layers at a time. Then I'm going to align the measurement that I am cutting with the fresh edge that I just created. And I'm making sure that both the vertical line and a horizontal line are aligned with the edges of my fabric just to make sure that my corners are nice and square and perpendicular. And then I'm going to make my cuts and set my leftover fabric aside. And then I'm just going to repeat until I get all of my sub cuts. I don't necessarily label what size pieces I am creating, but if you are someone who wants to know what size pieces you have just created, you can definitely label the piece sizes after you cut them. I normally just keep my fabrics all together knowing what color is A1, what color is A2, but you can definitely feel free to get more specific if you want the exact measurement labeled. So yeah, I will just keep cutting from there using the lines on my ruler for my cuts. I also want to point out, I came across this whenever I was making the lap size. So you might come across a measurement that is larger than your ruler. And I sometimes forget that I can turn my ruler lengthwise. Sometimes I just have it in my mind that it has to be used this way, but don't be afraid to turn your ruler like this. And you can even cut your pieces in sections if you need to turn your ruler like this. So maybe just cut one section, move your ruler up, cut the next section, move your ruler up, and then cut the next section. I've definitely been known to do that. You can also fold your fabric in half. So if you need to cut a piece that is 28 and a half inches, like for B1 for the lap size, then I can fold my fabric strip in half and line up the fold of my fabric with the halfway mark of that measurement. So I'm going to line up the fold of my fabric with 14 and a quarter, and then I am cutting two pieces at once on this side and then whenever I unfold it, then it's 28 and a half inches. So definitely take advantage of that method. If you need to cut a piece that's larger than any ruler that you have, fold the piece in half and cut two layers at a time, aligning the fold of that piece with the halfway mark for that measurement. I'm kind of covering a lot of different topics here. So feel free to find the written version on the blog post. Everything that I'm discussing is all going to be over there as well. So I will link to that below. So again, just make sure that you are keeping your fabrics organized, making sure that you remember which fabric is A1, A2, A3. Utilize the labels that are within your pattern, just like either pin those labels in place or clip them or just use the fabric worksheet and that will create a nice little key for you to refer back to as you are working your way through the pattern. Once you have everything cut, everything is labeled and organized, then you have officially completed week one of the upscale plaid quilt along. Congrats, this is a big step. Next week we are starting to sew. We are going to be strip piecing our pieces. So cutting is really a big deal. I find that that's like the biggest mindset hurdle whenever it's starting a new quilt is just getting everything cut out. So we will have that behind us after this week. And let me look at my notes just to make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, 
Uh, this video is going to live on our blog and YouTube, so you can refer back to it whenever. But if you are participating live, if you are going through according to our schedule for the quilt along, then I want to talk about prizes. So we have prizes each week, and this week is a really, really great prize. And I have it here. Let me grab it. It's actually two things and I'm really excited about them. First is an Aliso, I think I'm saying that right, Aliso iron. This is the full size iron. I'm pretty sure you can choose whatever color you wish. This is my iron, it's yellow. They have a few different colors to choose from, but you're gonna get full size Aliso iron and the mini iron. I'm so excited about this. I have been wanting to try this mini iron for a long time. You're going to get both the mini iron and the full size iron if you win the week one prize. So really excited about that. Thank you, Aliso. These are going to be such awesome prizes for one lucky winner. And so basically how you enter is let me make sure I'm getting this right. Okay, so you are going to take a progress photo of your week one progress. So this can be a picture of your fabrics. Uh, it could be a picture of the kit card with the fabrics. It can be a picture of your fabrics all cut up with the labels on them. It can be a picture of your quilt planning worksheet with all of your fabric swatches sewn to the worksheet any one of those options, you just want to post a photo of your progress for week one. So this is on Instagram. Your account has to be public in order for us to see your entry. If your account is private, then unfortunately we won't be able to see it. You are still welcome to participate. We want everyone to participate. Even if you don't have Instagram, you don't need it. This is just for the prizes. But if you are looking to enter to win the prize, then your account will have to be public. And then there are three hashtags that you have to put in the caption, upscale plaid quilt, hashtag upscale plaid quilt, hashtag lo and behold patterns. And these are on the cover of the upscale plaid pattern. So upscale plaid quilt, lo and behold patterns, and then hashtag upscale plaid quilt, Q-A-L, hashtag upscale plaid Q-A-L. That's all a mouthful. <laughs> Did you get that? I'm going to list it in the blog post too. So make sure you have those three hashtags. And then the final step, and this is the most important step, is that you tag lo and behold stitchery in the photo. So don't just tag us in the caption. It has to be in the photo. Instagram changed how they do hashtags. And so there's a small chance, even if you use the hashtag, we won't see your post. So you have to tag us in the photo. That's the only way that we can for sure guarantee that we see your entry. And we definitely want to see your entry so that you can enter to win both of those irons. So I'm so excited to see everyone's progress. I'm so excited to make this quilt with you all. Next week, we are going to start sewing. Next week will be week two and I will meet you back here. Same time, same place. Thanks for tuning in. Bye for now.